Thank you. Test. Thank you, worship team. Truly, praise and worship. The presence of the Lord is powerful. Nalede. This is an appointed and anointed sacred platform. Cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And truly, truly felt. The gravity of Holy Spirit right now. The last time I felt this was in Nigeria last year. Second Chronicles. Is it because they're on? <laughs> or is it because God wants your attention? Second book of the Chronicles, chapter one. Now Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord his God was with him and exalted him exceedingly. And Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, to the judges and every leader in Israel, the heads of the fathers' houses, then Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon for the tabernacle of meeting with God was there which Moses the servant of the Lord had made in the wilderness but David had brought up the ark of God from Kirjath Jerem to the place David had prepared for it 
for he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. Now the bronze altar that Bezazal sorry, Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, made, he, he put it before the tabernacle of the Lord. Solomon and the assembly sought him there. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the meeting and offered a thousand burnt offerings. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, You have shown great mercy to David my father and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established. For you have made me king over a people, like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now, give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches or wealth, or honor for the life of your or honor, or the life of your enemies. Nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people, over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. And, I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. So Solomon came to Jerusalem from the high place that was at Gibeon. From before the tabernacle of meeting and reigned over Israel. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots. 12,000 horsemen whom he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem. Also, the king made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stones and he made cedars as abundant as the sycamores, which are in the lowland. Uh, which are in the lowland. And Solomon had horses Solomon imported from Egypt and Kiva. Kiva. The king's merchants Morena, brought them in Kiva. Bamut Isa. Pardon, bought them in Kiva at the current price. They also acquired and imported 
from Egypt a chariot for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150 thus through their agents they exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria. I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, your presence is felt. And I ask of you to put in my heart, mind, body, soul, and will only that which you want. Anything not of you must go. I ask of you, Jesus, the meditation of my mind and heart be only unto you, and that I speak only your truth and nothing but the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yo, the power. It's almost difficult to actually stand. It's beautiful and precious. Yes. I think, please, sound desk, you have Adrian, or, yeah, you have Isaiah 61 to play. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon us, because the Lord has anointed us to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that we may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And we shall rebuild the old ruins. We shall raise up the former desolations, and we shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed our flocks, and the sons of the foreigners shall be our plowmen and our vine dressers. But we shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call us the servants of our God. We shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory we shall boast. Instead of our shame, we shall have double honor, and instead of confusion, we shall rejoice in our portion. Therefore, in our land, we shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be ours. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth and will make with them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the posterity whom the Lord has blessed. We will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Our souls shall be joyful in our God, for he has clothed us with the garments of salvation. He has covered us with the robe of righteousness. As a bride decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Amen and amen. Amen. Yeah. The year of the Lord's favor is on this body. 
Yeah. Sorry that it wasn't translated, but. <laughs> we will try to translate. <laughs> yeah, you can just look at Isaiah 61. Yeah. Just mark it. I sent two PDFs to Nalede that you're welcome to share with whomever. And there are two books that the Lord had me write. And if you don't read, write, or speak English, sorry I don't speak your language, <laughs> but perhaps you can teach me something. In the meantime, have Nalede read you bedtime stories. <laughs> I think let us please have chapter 12, and I'm going to sit down for this. I carry one in chapter 12. Found by yours truly, Landon, copyright 2019, chapter 12, Wealth, Riches, and Money, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Background. From 2009 to 2012, the Lord put it on my heart to study scripture on finance and finance and scripture. In 2012, I was gifted the book titled Money, Possessions, and Eternity by Randy Alcorn, which beautifully summarizes biblical finances. Putting all into practice over the years has been full of trials and tribulations of many kinds, testing my faith in Lord Jesus alone. What is shared in the message are basic building blocks of understanding how the Lord unlocks definitions of how he sees his wealth, plus man-made riches and monies. Per Ecclesiastes 12, everything is meaningless except for the love of our Lord Jesus. All of this must be grasped as best as possible in the heart of man in order to fully comprehend Father God's fundamental biblical message. None of us will perfect this in practice, but we can grow as close to the Lord as possible in our journey in better understanding Him and His biblical truths and principles. Biblically test all against written word and the worldly systems. All of Matthew chapter 6 is mission critical to read, study, understand, and apply as best as possible. There is much wisdom from Lord Jesus within the chapter, plus numerous other parts of the Bible speak to this subject. To understand Father God's heart around his wealth, plus worldly riches and monies, is to better understand that prosperity teachings can be misleading and Hardcore biblical truths are extraordinarily important for optimal discernment and application toward productivity and profitability. Also, please carefully study and read the importance and value of 2 Chronicles 1, where Solomon asks for wisdom and knowledge. All of the following is biblical in Lord Jesus' way. The above scripture is posted to remind you that Jesus is number one and the rest is immaterial. There is no get-rich-quick scheme. To unlock biblical wealth, riches, and monies takes many years, trials, and tribulations as a testing of faith. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, verse 21. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Matthew 6, verse 24. We must only serve, love, listen to, and obey Lord Jesus. Wealth. Defining wealth. Only that which Lord Jesus himself makes is biblical wealth. Jesus makes lands, waters, fresh produce, livestock, earthly minerals, human intelligence, and 
any other God-only made items. Our Heavenly Dad owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and he owns the thousand hills. Psalm 50, verse 10. Wealth is what the Lord makes. We cannot rely on wealth, but it is more sustainable through its intrinsic ongoing value than riches or money. We can rely on Lord Jesus. Riches. Defining riches. Man takes the wealth made by Father God, applies a value to the wealth, and or shapes the wealth into items of interest, then sells the items into the markets, thereby converting wealth into worldly, man-made riches. For example, a wristwatch is made of earthly materials, which are God's wealth, yet a human being molds the earthly materials into a wristwatch of value, sells it at a price, and the watch becomes an item of man-made riches. Proverbs 27 verse 24 clearly states, Riches do not endure forever, which means they are here one day and gone the next. We cannot rely on riches. We can rely on Lord Jesus. Money. Defining money. Money is a tool. Money is a form of currency. The word currency comes from the word current, which means to flow. Therefore, the tool of money flows from one hand to the next. Money is used in the markets to act as a medium or go-between amongst the varying market players. For example, the chicken farmer may want to own pigs. Instead of trading chickens for pigs, the farmer sells the chickens at the market in exchange for cash money in paper, coin, or digital form, and then uses the new money he would like to use to negotiate for the pigs. Money acts as the medium or go-between in the form of a tool to apply a man-made amount of money to the items of value. Money is the least sustainable form as it fluctuates in value. There is no way to rely on money as it comes and goes by way of its currency. We can only rely on Lord Jesus providing us with human intelligence to exchange our brain and or other wealth or riches into money. We can rely on Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. The reason I'd rather it be read to you than me read it is because it's just much clearer. So, what I've discovered is that in advance of a meeting, prayer is incredibly important. So I'd just like to ask, who are the prayer intercessors? Just stand for a moment. These people are some of the most influential persons in the world. Their positional authority in the spirit realm is powerful. Is it true, sister, that when you pray, more than not, you will receive, you will understand, you will experience Jesus' Holy Spirit? Is it true? It's true. And when you pray, do many things come to pass for which you prayed? Yes. So if you, sister, can pray, 
with the brethren for wealth riches and monies for the Holy Spirit to move through his body to have a fundamental understanding about how to live in his kingdom with abundance. Are you willing to do that? Will you take it to your other brethren who pray with and lead charge? Amen. Amen. Just for notes, I'm not going to go through the Bible on every one of these verses or, or chapters. But I'm going to ask of you to take note. Remember 2 Chronicles 1, Ecclesiastes 12, Isaiah 61. I'll say it again. Second Chronicles 1. Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. James 1 verse 5. Jacob 1 verse 5. Malachi 3:10. Malachi 3:10. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6. Proverbs 27 verse 24. Psalm 50 verse 10. Psalm 50 verse 10. Is everybody on par? I see one lady rigorously making notes. You're, you're on par? You're able to get all those? Okay. Just, just a few others. This is important. Job 42.10. Job 42.10. Joel 2.25. Joel 2:25, Proverbs 6:31, the Proverbia 6:31, Proverbs 13 verse 22, Proverbia 13 verse 22, and I just had this word come in. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteousness. The righteous, excuse me, the righteous. That one is the Proverbs 13, verse 22. And then the other thing that when I was sitting here, the Lord will not put us to shame when we have faith in Jesus. And have we ever seen the righteous go without eating have they been forsaken? No, no, because we have a promise-keeping God. So 2 Chronicles 1, I've already read. Isaiah 61, the same. You've heard in the audio Ecclesiastes 12. Everything is meaningless except for the love of our Lord. James chapter 1 verse 5 is also asking for wisdom and knowledge. Malachi 3.10 is saying test the Lord. Put in tithes and see how the Lord gives back. It's the only place in the Bible where the Lord says, test me. It's the only place. Tithe. Put in. Test him. Matthew chapter 6 is just overall, read it. It's about do not worry about today. The birds do not sow or reap. And they don't store up. Read that whole chapter. Because it's incredibly important. Yes. So now, 
Jolie. <laughs> I've finished the part where I feel that I need to focus and now I'm just going to let Holy Spirit overtake in full. I realize that the generator will come on soon. But Naledi and I spoke and we're going to let Jesus Holy Spirit overtake. Is that all right? Is that all right with you? Yeah. We certainly felt him in praise and worship. So let's see what else he has to say. I got saved in 2008. And in 2010, I went through healing through deliverance. I am one who sinned much. I am one who has been forgiven much. I am one who loves by proportion of forgiveness. I am radical for Jesus. I love Jesus more than life. And my wife understands that she loves Jesus more than me and I love Jesus more than her.